over the years I've gotten quite boring with my bases and don't serve together. Always living right in the middle of the map, not close to anything, but not far from anything either. It wasn't always like this though. Back in the day I would live in cool places like the Dragonfly Desert, Oasis and the Pig King Village. But why did I get so boring over the years? Well I think it's high time we fix that. How long can we survive with a base on Pearl's Island? For those who are uninitiated, Pearl's Island is an island, crazy right, found in the treacherous seas of Don't Starve Together. It's kinda tiny, however this tiny island is one of the biggest steps you need to fight the Celestial Champion itself. And it all starts with this sweetheart. This is Pearl. It's her island if you couldn't tell by the name. But I don't think she'll mind if we crash here with her. Maybe we could help her out a little bit in exchange as rent. The goal for this video is the same as the last one. Survive a year whilst only putting any and all base structures on Pearl's Island. Boats are allowed as well. We're allowed to leave the island and do whatever we can but only ever place base structures on the island itself. I always wanted to live near Pearl's Island but never on it. Might be interesting. After spawning in I will use console commands to reveal the island to me. I wasn't going to waste time looking for bottles. And then do my standard DST playthrough with a cool moon base. Attempting other challenges too like maybe the Malbatross. How did it go? Well, why don't we find out? Character pick time! I'll cut to the chase, I picked Wart. Wart is my main, believe it or not, despite never playing her in a single video, but I love Wart. Wart is my darling and everything about her is my jam. Wetness protection, better food from veggies, a rising a mermarmy to crush our enemies. Yeah, this will all be super useful on this island. Merms might take a while to get situated, but that's fine. All her passives make up for it. Tig went with Wanda. Being able to recall to the island whenever they wanted would be a godsend at times. And of course Wanda is just a really strong character overall. A new pick for Tig, but let's see how that goes with time. <laughs> you get it because it's Wanda? Standard world settings like always, and UI mods like always. You got the picture by now. Let's go. Aha! I lied! I did change one world setting, it was the seasonal start. I set it to be either spring or autumn. This is a thing I'm gonna do from now on during my playthrough since after playing that solo playthrough, that series is still in the works by the way, don't worry about it. The spring start was such a cool and refreshing take on the standard start. So bugger it, springtime it is baby! Again, perfect time to pick words. After I spawned in and got the location of the island found, it was time for the early game grind. You know it by now, you love it. We can't build a science machine until we're on the island so I gotta get as many materials as we could so I didn't have to make multiple trips right away. After spending a really cool and epic night with a tall bird, I spent the rest of day two hoarding materials. I wanted to make an alchemy engine right away when landing on the island so I didn't have to make two trips to get some basic stuff ready. So that means lots of stones and even more wood. Good rocky biome near the spawn meant the former was taken care of easily and the latter is rarely a problem. On the dawn of the third day we found ourselves at the coast right next to Pearl's Island. With the two days of prep and pockets full of materials, we sailed on out with the world's most scrunkly looking raft. First thing we came across was a salt biome. Why is it that whenever I play the game with a cool, freaky restriction, cool stuff is everywhere, but when I play the game normally, oh no, you ain't finding a salt biome anywhere! It's local, which is going to be mega useful. We finally touched moony ground. Welcome to Pearl's Island. It's a piece of the moon, but without any of the nightmares found on the moon. Wait, not nightmares, you know, gestalt. Has loon trees, loon saplings, bit of glass, all somewhat useful stuff, but I want these bull kelp stalks for now since it's a reliable food source. We planted the kelp stalks in the nearby water as well as getting down our science machine so we can make our early game gear. Oh, and, um, well, just take a look, really. Um, you're joking. You are actually joking. Um. Wait, what? <laughs> what is this? That's, That's the, the moon, moon key. key. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's literally next. What? Well, that certainly is an interesting bit of world gen, isn't it? Gosh, all we need now is a waterlogged biome nearby and the lunar island itself for the perfect run. But this is more than enough for now. I upgraded the science machine and got a think tank down so I can make an actual boat. I wasn't going to rely on grass rafts in my entire life, so this is nice. And I can dry the kelp on Pearl's drying racks. She'll appreciate this. Oh, by the way, this is a Krabby Hermit, soon to be known as the aforementioned Pearl. 
She keeps to herself for now, but I think if we do little things for her here and there, she'll come out of her shell. For now, this kelp earned us a bundle of thanks with some funny musical shells in it. Cute. Thanks, Hermit. Tig started to work on their farm. You can take Tig out of the farm, but you can't take the farm out of the Tig. Whilst they were doing that, I traded a bottle we found for a pinching winch on the boat. I don't know why I made this to be honest, there's better things to worry about right now. But getting these bits of debris out of the coast will take a while, so no better time to do it than piece by piece. Pearl will appreciate this, I bet. But now it's day 5, so Tig and I decided to sail back to mainland with our shovels and backpacks to relocate materials over. That is true. Why? Are you kidding me? Please, Rain, put it out. Hmm. Well, uh, thank god I'm work, huh? Didn't lose anything from that except the boat. Oh, but Tig lost a few things, though. No worries, though. Nothing we couldn't get back. That's really good, actually. Oh! Oh my god. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's spring, let's not forget. I'll be okay with the wetness, but Tig is gonna go insane real fast. Also, I'm not okay with lightning, and neither is our boats, as you saw. As you could have expected, the next few days were resourcing. Getting a decent amount of grass tufts, berry bushes, and even swinging by the swamp for a short whisper to get some pigskin, marsh turf, and all sorts. Found the dragonfly desert, literally inside the swamp. See what I mean when I say this is an interesting world? We arrived back home on day 8 as I spent the day literally wrestling with getting a good turf placement for these grass tufts. Yet yeah, our food is looking terrible and I'm still affording time to do this nonsense. That's why you're still here, I hope. This little, this very little island was starting to grow on us. Sure, it's tiny, not got a lot of room on it, it's home to a grumpy crab babushka, but hey, it's a change of scenery and playstyle. Something I'm sure you can tell I enjoy in these videos. And don't forget, if you enjoy these videos, leave a comment, like, subscribe, I reply to all the comments I can. <laughs> okay, bye. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, Tig was going insane. Probably due to the massive amounts of downpour we're getting, so they were forced to fight for their goddamn life. Well, whilst they were doing that, I got the grass down. Less reasons to leave this island for menial tasks, the better, I always say. I've never said this in my life. I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on it. Uh. Are you kidding me? Okay, um. The nightmares finally caught up with old Wanda. She thought she could run forever. Well, I guess we all get take back in action then, huh? The closest spiders we know of are the ones in the swamp, so a quick shimmy over there, a bit of a tussle, and we got Tig back in action. Welcome back, Tig. Be a bit more careful now. There's a lot of shit up here. Oh, no, I got clipped. Okay. Right, yep, yeah, okay. I'm dead. Are you kidding me? As much as I love the swamp and all its merm goodness has worked, it's still an incredibly dangerous place for humans. Since we're back on mainland, we may as well take advantage of this moment and grab a couple more bits of guff before we sail back to our... Well, sorry, before we sail back to Pearl's Cool Island. These berry bushes will be a nice source of food and Pearl will appreciate them, giving us another friendship point. Do stuff for her, she'll open up to you. We got a full moon on the piece of the moon. Nothing we could really do over here, so day 12 rolled around all the same. Our food wasn't the best, I'll be perfectly honest with you. We got a nice farm and, um, well that's it really. No fridges yet, so we need to get on that soon. The moon key has a lot of scrap machinery that drops a buttload of gear, so that's an icebox or two waiting for us. I upgraded the boat with an actual sail and lightning catcher this time. We're not gonna have a repeat of. That is true. Why? That, again, are we? Since I'm playing as Wurt with my pet fish, my sanity was never an issue, so I spent some of that to dig up a couple of graves. Getting the usual garbage as well as gears and a red gem. These gears will save me a trip to the moon key, despite it being literally next door, which is good since I don't want to deal with monkeys right now. Apparently you're supposed to let Pearl eat the food, heart in, out the food, eat cold the food. Huh? Why do they call it of in when out hot eat cold food? Yeah. Why do they do Why? that? Right, but what did you say? <laughs> I've completely lost my train of thought now, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why is it called the of N if out hot in... <laughs> you meant to let 
Pearl eat the hot cold. Oh, I, I'm actually gonna die. You're meant to, you're meant to yeah. let Pearl eat the food hot in out the. F <laughs> I can't resist. What the f are you saying? You're meant to let Pearl eat. I can't. No, I can't. I, I physically can't resist this joke. <laughs> you're meant to let Pearl eat. I can't. Oh my god, why can't I do this? Oh, why can't I do this? Yeah, why is it called the oven if out of hot. <laughs> Why though? I don't understand why they call it that. Honestly, why? You meant to let Pearl. Of it, no. Eat, <laughs> eat hot, yeah. You meant to let her eat the food off the drying racks, hot in oven, and and then <laughs> that's how you get a friendship point. You, it's like a redoable job for you, for her. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If she ovens out hot the cold. <laughs> Delirium fueled discussions aside, I was out here catching butterflies to plant flowers on the island. Would be nice to pretty the place up a little bit for Pearl and get some honey from her bee box. I also forgot to mention I came out here to get ice too since summer was right around the corner and the glaciers were melting fast so a handful of ice now would be a godsend. Back on the island I made a crock pot and an ice box. A wee bit late, not gonna lie, but better late than never. It started to rain. I mean, no surprise, yeah, cool, awesome, it's spring. But I exploited this by enacting kindness on this old hermit by giving her an umbrella. Another friendship point for me and a good deed done. Pollen for the bees mean more honey, and more flowers mean more butterflies, which in turn means more flowers and therefore more honey. Jesus Christ. Plus, you guessed it, another good deed for Pearl. I bet a very small percentage of people have actually fought a tree guard on Pearl's Island before. Glad I'm part of that exclusive club now, I suppose. Obviously wasn't too hard to deal with, we're ultra gamers after all, so day 16 roll around. And then day 17. Don't ask what happened yesterday, it was boring. But today was a Moonkey Day. I'm just gonna squeeze this in here. So last video I said we were close to hitting 4,000 subscribers. And then you smashed it. And now we're close to hitting 5,000 subscribers. You guys are kind of scaring me a little bit. I don't know if I should have mentioned this, but yeah, you guys are fantastic and I love all of you, thank you so so much, and gaming time. Gosh, I know it's been a while since that last video, but after spending a year on here, ugh, I don't want to think about it. So we grabbed a couple of gears, banana bushes, monkey tail reeds, accursed trinkets, and then bounced back home. I got the banana bushes down, but with very little fertilizer, they're going to have to stay dry for now. Oh, and we got a hound attack. I mentioned this in the last video, but I'm not going to mention every hound attack, just the interesting ones. This indeed was an interesting one because, um, well, I almost died. But I didn't. Pearl? Where? Hang on. Pearl, where? Oh, uh, sorry. But Pearl just ate our berries. Wait, she does she that? She walked up to the berry bush, ate it, and went to go fish. That's a good point. Pearl, you f No! <laughs> she oh my god. She just goes and crunches. <laughs> yeah, she does that, by the way. I mean, it makes sense. This is her island, after all. I was wondering where our berries were going. Before summer, we wanted to boost our food supplies a little bit since they were looking kind of grim. Nothing a short trip back to the mainland can't fix. I even found the big stupid celestial orb in case we wanted to change characters, which Tig was thinking of doing in all honesty. We found the pig village. From all that broken machinery, we also found a buttload of frazzled wires, and since I have no plans on making those weird boat magnets, Tig, because I ain't going in that village, turned all those frazzled wires into gold setting us on gold for life. I also found Chester, the little darling. Hey, ya buddy. We crammed in a little bit more foraging and scavenging and a decently full backpack. We sailed back home on... It's summertime. A bit of an earlier summer than we're used to, but as you saw from the solo playthrough, I hope, this ain't gonna be too difficult for me. Sounds like someone having fun over there. No! <gasps> Uh-oh. What happened? <gasps> Monkeys. Okay. Um, right. That's a problem. They're, They're taking, taking all my food! Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Living right next to the Moonkey means that we're gonna have this happen a fair few times. Best get used to it. The monkey loot might come in handy though. Pearl complained about this lure plant, so we did the right thing and got rid of it. Anything for you, Pearl, my dear. Anyway, yes, this is summer. It's hot, there's a chance of wildfires, and you've all seen summer by now, surely. We got a nice thing and down and look. This time it won't extinguish the endophobic fire pit. Aren't you all proud of me? 
Continuing to dry kelp on the drying racks is a good way to get Pearl's trust up since it's a repeatable task and costs next to nothing. However, if we want her to get to max trust we need to repair her house up a bit which will cost a fair few materials. I think we want to get her to max trust before the year is up. I don't know why but it's because it's fun. I know people can speedrun this in under a day but I don't care, they're not me. I remade the pinch and winch on this boat since, well... That is true. Why? Yeah, that. And I use that to clear up the rest of the debris around the island for our old dear. She deserves nice clear water so this was the least we could do for her. Considering that we live rent free on her island of course. With these bottles, a bit of kelp and a bit of ash I was able to make some growth formula. It's a great and cheap way to fertilise bushes and such. No idea why I don't do this more often. But I wanted to explore, so on day 25 whilst Tig babies at the base I went out to find some sunken treasure and maybe see a bit more of the world whilst I'm out here too. It wasn't any more than a stone throw away so I set out and quickly came across... Oh I found the Lunar Island. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. An old friend. Well if it isn't my second favourite lunar in the world, the Lunar Island. But unfortunately for it, I'm here on business, not pleasure, so I'm going to take a couple of stone fruit bushes, a bit of glass and moon rock, maybe even assemble this celestial altar a little bit. Why not? Could be funny. However, on day 26, whilst on the Lunar Island, some hounds came. It's not the best place to fight hounds, especially at full enlightenment, but I pulled through. Barely. Bloodied and battered, but still breathing. I finished up the celestial altar to make some glass tools for us before hopping back onto my boat. And then back off my boat again to grab a buttload of these bull kelp stalks to plant around the island. Fantastic food for all of us, but especially me. I got the sunken chest, aka the main reason I went on this trip, and sailed back on home. Back on the island I planted those kelp stalks. Oh yeah, ignore this big sinkhole, the uh, the antline got mad at us. Completely forgot about them. Well hopefully they don't end up smashing our entire base. And if you wonder why there's significantly less trees than usual, well... Uh, 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 uh. What's going on? Oh, oh god. Okay. Oh, it's not reaching it. Yeah, because of that. Oh yeah, I forgot. Let's open that chest that I found. Forgot about it until now. It had um decent-ish stuff in there. Nothing we were hurting to get, but... Yeah, okay, it's kind of rough to be fair. Speaking of rough, the outline was cheesed again and cut down our living space a bit more. By the way, these holes last for like 30 days, so gotta enjoy having less space for a while. At night we wanted to kill some cookie cutters because they needed to upgrade Pearl's house, so after a quick little incursion we went back to the mainland for good old fashioned resourcing. Due to wildfires we were missing a fair amount of trees, but these glass axes I made decimated these things. Now you're probably thinking, Ash, it's day 31 and your playing has worked. You haven't made the Merm King yet. A single merm house or even befriended a merm yet. What gives? Well if I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know. I'm kinda busy just getting things situated at the moment on the island to worry about sorting the merms out. Thankfully for me, Wirt's passives alone have carried me in this run. Just goes to show you how perfect Wirt is. Even without her main gimmick she's still a must pick. I love my little trash goblin. Oh, we also headed back to the Moon Key on the night of day 32 to get rid of these accursed trinkets with a couple of bananas since they were growing on our island now. Only for me to get one back almost instantly. Oh well, at least the monkeys won't attack me for a short while. Are you kidding me? I thought I had Rite of Passage! Wait, I do. They're not going to attack me, right? No, they absolutely are going to attack me. Yeah, take everything, dude. Go away. Right, bye. There he goes. Bye. Never mind. They don't actually hurt you, just take your stuff, so I was okay. Lost a few boat patch kits, but nothing irreplaceable. I did find more sunken treasure though. I'd let's see you monkey nerds try and take this. Around noon of day 34, we cracked it open to find... A cool set... Oh, voice crack. A cool set of fishing equipment. I didn't really have the easiest time getting silk, so the sea fishing rod will come in super handy. Especially since Pearl is an easy source of lures and floats. There are so many goodies related to fishing here. If you're big on fishing, then 100% take the time to visit this island. Oh yeah. Put your tackles in there. Oh. And you can carry it in your inventory as well. It makes a very satisfying noise. Do the floats go in there as well? Anything goes in there. <laughs> it's a lovely noise. I love that noise. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. I just love it. We were enamored with this noise. This summer really wasn't that bad. Like, at all, really. No devastating wildfires. Rarely overheated due to always being close to an endothermic fire pit. Things were looking really nice. I even caught me some sunfish. These guys give you lots of heat when held. Enough to completely nullify winter's cold. And as of words, any fish I hold will last way longer as well as give me sanity. Combine this with a tin fishing bin to refresh the fish's freshness, and you'll never have to worry about the cold again. I headed back home to wrap up this fantastic summer. Oh. Tig was a little bit silly and was tabbed out during an outline attack. And the outline kinda just took out our croc bar, alchemy engine, and upheaved like 80% of the grass tufts. Look, it could be worse. Way worse. God, I just had to say someone was going good, didn't I? And to top that off, another hound attack. With a varglet. This almost killed us. Okay, we're taking things for granted. We've got to straighten up now since we're halfway done, and that means it's time for... Yeah, autumn at the halfway point. I'm excited for this. Autumn in the first year is usually spent rushing around the map and setting your base up. But now that our base is already set up, it's time to get stuff done. So we spent the first day doing absolutely nothing. We just wanted to recoup the base a little bit, upgrade the boat before starting to sink our teeth into autumn proper. I wanted back to mainland. What? I went back to mainland to get some more materials. Mostly silk, but then I saw this. Pirates? Oh yeah, but they're getting f cookie cutters right now. Oh no! Oh my gosh! Um... Are they dying? They spawned in the cookie cutter field. Oh no. <laughs> Idiots, imagine getting stuck at a salt field like that. We got a treasure map that, oh, it leads to one that we found earlier. Never mind. Oh, I should uh, probably mention what these treasure maps actually do, shouldn't I? Um, well, when a pirate attack happens, if you manage to kill the prime ape, the funny looking guy with the paddle, he will drop a treasure map that will lead to a stash of all the items that they've ever stolen from you, as well as some unique stuff. One of the few things we need is marble. We need that to upgrade Pearl's house. I forgot to mention we upgraded their house to tier 2 the other day. We need the marble for that tier 3. Also, Tig would benefit from the marble for extra watches. But I wasn't going to fight all these clockwork, so using my sick gamer skills, I got the rook to smash up most of the marble sculptures whilst almost not dying. Win! I found that aforementioned pirate stash, and it had all the stuff they stole, and, um, just rubbish, really. Either way, I quickly dipped into the caves to get some light bulbs and headed over to the swamp to get some more silk. Bit risky since I had no armor on or fight in me, but I still got a decent amount of it. I trotted on over to the savannah to get some more grass since... Well... That, and I made some traps to capture rabbits when I come back here. Back on island, I fertilized all the berry bushes and did some just basic base chores, really. But I... Hang on, I can't remember what I did today. All I wrote was a big fly in my script. Oh, the Lord of the Fruit Flies turned up! Yeah, yeah, cakewalk boss that spawns when you get too many crops. Gives you a cute little fly pet out of the garden, so that'll make Tig's life a little bit easier. Also, Pearl opened up to us. No idea what we did, but she name-dropped herself, so now we can officially call her Pearl without being weird. On day 42, Tig left me. So I just wanted to explore the ocean a little bit, and you'll be glad to know that after sailing around the waves, I found- I'm not doing this joke again, I found bugger all. I did get a cool sunken chest though. However, at one point I may have gotten distracted by my funny Discord community and... I'm alive, baby. Couple of patches on the boat and a few scratches on my scales. Fur? But it will take a whole lot more than that to kill me. Oh yeah, look, I forgot to mention I set up a trawl net. One issue though, I can't reach it. So I had to lug a boat around. Oh, uh, Tig, what if I just, how have I just done this? What have you done? <sighs> oh no. For <laughs> God's sake. Uh... <laughs> Smacked open that chest and it had stuff in it. Fashion goggles, papyrus, a walking cane, even a narwhal horn. Never found one of these before, 
It does this! I fixed my epic blunder so now I can actually use the troll net. I'm the man failure of my dreams. Well, I mean, we all know the biggest man failure in Don't Serve Together is Wilson. Gosh, what a man. I, I don't mean to be dramatic, but I am going to tr- Day 46 crash landed. We bought some fish food from Pearl. It attracts fish in an area. I probably buggered the use of it, but I can see this being helpful at times. Especially if you got plenty of spare bottles. But I don't want fish. I want mangy beefalo wool. So I got some. Why? Well, I've decided it was time to finally get my Merm Kingdom going. Better late than never. Also got some more marsh turf and carpet turf because Pearl will need that for our final house upgrade. What does that give us? Something special. Oh, I found him. Hello. Right, yeah, the Berger. This dude spawned because it's late autumn. He's not going to be any kind of issue to us since he's neutral and um, can't swim, so he can stay. He never actually despawned, so if we need him, we know where to find him. Pearl's house was now complete, a crucial step in maxing out her friendship. As of right now though, it just lets us buy some more doohickeys and thingamajigs from her. But I did this because... well, I feel for this grandma. It's nice seeing her go from this grumpy old curmudgeon into this sweet-spoken and caring darling. My reward for helping out Pearl was to commandeer a piece of her land and turn it into a micro-swamp. I originally planned on taking over the island entirely, but I grew to like its colourful aesthetic, so only the tip will be a bit swampy. Another monkey attack! They ain't limited to only sealing the stuff off your boat and will come onto land to take stuff as well, so we had to clear them out. At first, I loved the idea of having the moon key right next door, but a monkey attack would happen every other time we left the island, so it was a swings and roundabouts kind of deal. Tig's new job was getting big fish for Pearl. We're close to getting her to maximum trust. I think Tig was just getting soft though, bless him. I came back to the old trusty musty swamp to find some merms and other bits I needed to make my kingdom. I'll need fish for the house and a bit of reeds. I did find the buried pirate stash and this one was way better than the last one. Lots of cool banana shakes and a blueprint for a cool hat. I don't make it this run, but maybe next time. Only one Merm survived that mess, so he's got the luxury of becoming the Big Cheese Merm himself. Gosh, look at that little guy. He looks like when birds sit down. Finally, King time. A big buff to my stats and any followers I can recruit. Nice. Also look, finally the sinkholes were starting to heal back over. It will still take a few more weeks before we get the base back to how it was though. Pirates. Again. I wasn't going to fight them, but I had a genius idea. Interesting. Oh, there we go. they got to the banner, and then they leave. Okay, so banana. Oh, look at it. They just um, smashed okay. the swamp up. <laughs> leave! Alright. <laughs> oh, Peeling off like that. Look. Yep. Smash into the boat and then leave. Let's see a loser. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they'll prioritize bananas over any other loot and then instantly leave if they get them. I wish I remembered this sooner. Oh, you're the best friends of her now. If you ever find my Pearl's sweetie Pearl. on her travels, could you give him that pearl? He'll recognize it. I'll do my best. We did it. We got her full trust. This pearl means a lot to her. But for this playthrough, not so much. But next time, next time. Thank you, Pearl. I, uh, I appreciate you. I went back to the moon key to get some blueprints. I wanted dock turf since that's a great way to expand the little room we have. So I did just that and created a loop on the island. We had a goal in mind now. It's big, it's mean-ish, but more importantly, it's blue. The Malbatross. In our over a thousand hours combined in this game, we've never fought the thing before. This run was going to be our testing grounds for it, so we decided to prepare. I needed some of the best weapons in the game. What are those exactly? Not hand bats, not dark swords. These guys, my loyal merm guards. Look at their stats. Gosh, the best ally in the game, I swear. We don't have the most materials or space for that matter, so I could only get a few of them for now. I think three will do. We got our weapons, food, healing items and armor ready to fight the Malbatross. A great way of spawning this thing was to drop a trawling net into a deep bass shoal since that's where it spawns. 
After taking a while to figure out what exactly we needed to bait the fish, seriously, this took way too much fap. We went out to, oh for God's sake, hound attack. This wasn't the best hound attack, but it wasn't the worst. Okay, take two, let's go out and get the, oh for Christ's sake, everything has to go wrong, doesn't it? Pirates again. Oh. Right, monkeys down. Are there going to be any more distractions besides the biting cold? No. All right then. Yeah, 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 shut up about winter. It's time to fight the massive stinky bird. Let's get it. Okay, it's too cold. Never mind. I can't put a fire pit on the boat because of the bumpers are in the way. And I know what you're all thinking. I know. I'll get to it. My genius idea to stay hot for now was as such. Prick myself on a fire nettle. This will keep my body temperature rising for a short bit. So with my food spoiled, time wasted, and head ached for the final time, let's go and fight the bloody Malbatross. Okay, there it is. Okay, that's good. Um, Alright, how do we do? How do we video again? Uh, uh, the troll net. Yeah, you touched the troll net. Well, I'm going for it. Through. Punch him. Oh! Yeah? Okay, well, that, that was something. Alright, now what? Oh, it just punches a f in the boat, that's good. Oh no, it's not punching holes in the boat. It's the easiest boss It's just the easiest boss in the game, dude. What the it's dead anyway. The first ever Malvatros skill for us. Yep. Oh huh. my god, it leaves the whole body. Interesting. Hang on, wait, we were scared of that guy? You're kidding me, that was the easiest boss I've ever fought. Huh. Guess I gotta kill him more often now, yeah. It dropped a lot of stuff. Meat, feathers, free blue gems, and a Malvatros bill. The bill is a great ore that can be used to make the best of watering can in the game. Yeah, Tig is gonna want me to kill this thing every run from now on, huh? The feathers can be turned into canvas, which can then be turned into the feather sail. We'll make that soon, but I, uh, discovered something. Yeah, we could just leave that. What am I doing? Oh my god, I'm an actual f What did you do? I could just use the sunfish. <laughs> You're right. So can you. <laughs> that, that's literally what... Oh my god. Mm -hmm, a bit late, but this is going to be useful. Sunfish will increase your heat when held, and thanks to Wurt, will spoil real slow. I can practically say goodbye to ever worrying about freezing to death. A massive win. I made the feather sail and put it on the boat. Alright, does for done, yeah. Oh, yeah, it takes a while. Oh, you gotta heave ho it. Oh, oh my god, I'm going right into the f. Drawn Oh no! I think you just smashed through it or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boat sinking rapid, like, great. Fast sail, but when am I ever gonna need this much speed? This will kill me. Not much happened on these next few days, we just did some base chores and took care of a few things. Anyway, I went back to the mainland and found Klaus's heaving sack. Maybe we could fight him. Maybe? I came here just to get some basic stuff. May as well, since this sunfish in my inventory means this is just a darker autumn. No worries about ever freezing. Oh yeah, things were normal until she spawned. Yo, oh, what's up, Bozo? Luna said, energy, transform, go. Sparkle, 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 sparkle. Fire, fire, sparkle, sparkle. Fire, demon, fire, fire, demon, fire, fire, kill that. This is probably the most irresponsible thing I've ever done in my life. dead. <laughs> I am such a gamer, holy Christ, thank you guys for hyping me up during that fight. I needed to head back to base after that because my stats were beyond scuffed. Look at them. Gotta bank this deer clops eyeball too. I'm gonna be straight with you guys, as if, and say the remaining days of winter were kinda slow. It got to that point in the run where we didn't want to commit to doing anything too grandiose like the Ruins or Crab King since we'll run out of time thanks to the challenge. So we're stuck in this limbo of can't do anything too crazy but can't do nothing as well. We'll figure something out though, stick with us, like this terrarium. 
we can do the funny yoinky splunky with the Eye of Terror. As with all previous boss incursions, we spent the day preparing. We were out of pigskin and since Tig never left the island, they couldn't get us pigskin. I mean sure, I could have gotten pigskin too, but stinky pigs. So we had to rely on some basic spears and log suits for this fight. The only healing item I would have would be bananas and stone fruit. Things were looking kind of rough, not gonna lie, but I got merms on my side. I can't lose. Case in point, look at these hounds and how the merms refused to help me since I couldn't feed them in time. Epic! Am I the only one that thinks ice hound waves are easier? You can freeze other hounds with them as some sort of crowd control making it way more tolerable. Compared to fire hounds and varguts, ugh. I used my loyal merms to pulverize these stone fruit. It's that dopamine from that, Oh. Okay, okay, enough waffling about. Time to battle this mega eye. I love when it floats over water and lays an egg oh, in cool. water. What am I lagging? It's gonna go do its charge immediately. We got babies. Joking. He's joking. I'm trying to have a funny armor. You got it, you got it. You can do this, yeah, 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 yeah. Just do the slam attack. You haven't done that in a while. You haven't done that at all. There we go. I'll take care of the eggs, don't worry. We probably should just full force him now. We'll just push through. There you go, you got it. Easy peasy, eyeball squeezy. Ew, why did I say that? One of the easier fights in the game, especially with a big merm army and a massive health pool. We got some milky whites and the eye mask from it, a rechargeable helmet slot armor. I realize we've never fought this eyeball before on this channel, so there you go. It has an alternative version, but not now. Not now. Anyway, I went back to mainland and found this. Man's kipped out proper over here. Actual legend. The Bearger doesn't despawn when winter starts and he just kind of hibernates. This is a significantly worse time to fight him too since he'll employ a yawning base attack and make us groggy, in turn making him harder to kite. We're getting near the end of this run. Like I said before, there wasn't a lot we could do sadly without getting cut off by the year's end. So I have a proposition for you. Would you like runs like this to have a part 2? Where we take on things like the Ruins, Fuel Weaver, Crab Kings and even the Celestial Champion? We're slow at this game if you couldn't tell, so we didn't want to cram it all in one video. Let us know because we're loving this run so far and we kinda don't want to finish it just yet. But for now, we wanted to go on a little boat adventure to see the world one last time potentially. We never did find any waterlogged biomes. Would have been awesome to have a tree right in the middle of the island for global coverage. Again, a reason why I don't want this run to end just yet. You've gone, wait, you've gone so far right we're going back on it ourselves. Well, that's what you told me. Right, okay, you've absolutely just... No, you've just f***ed now. No, you're good. No, you're good. I'm not good. We're not good. I'm, 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 we're gonna die. <laughs> you're making I'm trying my best. You're making, you're making the situation work. I'm trying my best here. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're going to die. Oh, every man for himself. Alright. I can't mount it. Get on. I think you said like right into the land. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. We need to. We, we need to just jump off. We need to bail off. Fine. You're leaving me in the sweet doors. <laughs> this isn't good. This isn't good. I'm back on the boat. We can, we can recover. We can recover. Don't the worry. boat just exploded. Right. Well, it's fine. It didn't have anything that special on it. <laughs> Except for like a really cool, for, uh, you know, sail and stuff. Uh, oopsie. But with that, I think... Is that... We did it. Survived a year on the island and even killed the Malbatross and a couple of other bosses. This was fun. <laughs> really fun. Much like the Slots Island, having your own island base is so cool. Especially with the Krabby Herb, sorry, especially with Pearl keeping us company. I do think we have some unfinished business, but for now, we're signing off here. As we touch ground on the island once more, our story concludes. For now.
Thanks for watching if you made it this far. I really appreciate you sticking around for the entire video. But before you go, I want to give a massive shout out to our YouTube partners. Jordan, Spider Girl Joey, Toby, Lucenia, Nectarine, Autumn, Boom, and Princess. Thank all of you for your support. If you want to get your name and a little picture on the screen, then feel free to join via the channel membership page. You'll also get a special Discord role as well as a mention on my homepage and videos. However, as always, it is never needed but always appreciated. Thank you for any kind of support, even as simple as watching this far. Stay loved, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.